every hurricane season, we have new challenges. And as we've seen over the past couple of years, the COVID-19 pandemic really forced us to rethink how we evacuate or shelter in place. Yeah, the main challenge for a lot of people from last year, many are still displaced and in temporary homes. I took a trip down the bayou as people there voiced concerns about the future of their communities. A lot of natives, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the Verdans, the Billy Eyes, the Dardars, uh, the Parfaits, the Fitches, uh, you got the Duplantis, you know, so uh, then you have a lot of, also a lot of African Americans because you had a plantation, one of the largest plantations was Ashland Plantation right up the road. Clarence Verdan, who you may recognize from the NFL, has roots in Terrebonne Parish. He showed us around the area of Bobtown and Dulac, which is about 35 miles southeast of Port Fouchon, where Hurricane Ida hit. Verdan showed us the destruction that remains. A lot of the infrastructure you see either is gone or is damaged, you know, so they're still in the process of uh, trying to get mitigation grants and different type of funding to restore their home. And, you know, the hurricane is upon us next month. Paris President Gordon Dove reflected on the scope of work in Terrebonne and told us that although there is much left to do, much has been accomplished. Pornishan, Montague, Chauvin, Dulag, is, is I, the rebuilding is really going fantastic uh, for the one that can rebuild without starting from nothing, you know? And so we've, you know, we, we've been fighting the housing problem and there's more and more FEMA trailers all starting to move into town and we're working with GoSef with the state and they've worked well with us. Dove says the parish has $17 million in hazard mitigation money and giving grants to repair or lift homes. Still folks in Bobtown, like Nigel Robinson, are concerned as now hurricane season is here again. What's going to happen if people don't have FEMA um, or if FEMA denies them? Like, I'm concerned with, is it going to stay this way forever? Like, is anybody going to come out and help and help to rebuild this community? Lois Hill tells us people here are living in conditions that are challenged by the weather all the time. But during hurricane season, they'll have to evacuate for just about any threat. Any type of high winds, it's going to blow the little tarps that they do have on, uh, the little FEMA trailers that they in. They complain about the trailers rocking all the time because of the high winds. They have to move. For WDSU News, I'm meteorologist Damon Singleton. Remember the one house that survived Hurricane Michael's 160 mile per hour winds at Mexico Beach? Well, there was a lot of talk about how it was built to withstand a major hurricane 12 years earlier. A house was designed and built in this area to do the very same thing. This is Murray Daniels' house. He designed it and built it in 2005, right before Katrina. He's on the lake but didn't see much surge from Katrina. This column shows the benchmarks of the tidal surge from the last six storms. Starting at the bottom, it was Katrina, then Rita, then Gustav, then Ike, then Isaac, then Ida. The wind gusts were estimated up to 150 miles per hour and took off part of the roof. The house was listed as a total loss. The water came from basically this direction and it went through the bottom of the house. Everything had breakaway walls, which means there's no bottom anchors in the, the floor plates. And all the downstairs, the first floor washed away, the stairs washed away, the stairs in front washed away. And it was just a clean sweep through the bottom of the house and everything went in a swamp. But the house was still standing, just like his restaurant he designed next door. This is for near Landing Restaurant, right on the western edge of Lake Pontchartrain. You would expect a lot of damage here from Ida. So what happened? The stairs were washed away, a little bit of roof damage. That's it. Why so little damage? The way this building was constructed. Both buildings are built high off the ground. The house, 17 feet. The restaurant, 19 feet. The water is meant to go under the buildings and wash away anything on the first floor, except the cement and steel columns. Every component of the building is welded or tied together with hurricane straps. You actually must connect from the pilings and the mud all the way up to the last rafter 
on the roof system, you must connect everything together to where the wind won't have any lift force on the roof to take it off. If the roof comes off, the building is usually coming down. Daniel says you have to expect damage living by the water in Hurricane Alley. We have codes on how to make the house survive 150 mile an hour winds. When it comes to water, all bets are off. If the water gets into that house there, that house is in the swamp. So Daniel says build high. If you want a house to survive the next 50 years, build two to three feet above what is recommended because of our changing climate. He estimates hurricane proofing a building will cost an additional $40 per square foot, but to raise the building, a whole lot more. Unfortunately, the price is unaffordable for most. Every year, leaders warn of carbon monoxide, the silent killer, which is produced from improper use of generators. Coming up, the surprising place experts suggest installing a detector. Ida has been removed from the recurring list of storm names. Find out which letter has been retired the most since the 1950s as we go to break. Here's a look at some information you should have readily available in the event a storm heads your way.